three of a series of presentations about diving with oceanic whitetips, uh, some safe diving practices and guidelines, actually. Uh, so just to give you a bit, again, of a summary of what's part of this whole series, I already did part one and two about shark sensory systems and about oceanic whitetip biology and behavior. The next two parts are the ones that actually gave these series uh, of presentations the title. So we're talking about the diving with the oceanics and the uh, guidelines and safe diving practices. And then there'll be another two parts, part five and six, uh, that will give the information that you see here on the screen. Uh, to start, now the specifics of uh, safe diving practices with oceanics, I want to actually bring back the last slide from uh, the second presentation, just as a reminder. So let me go back to this. We are dealing with very confident um, and curious predators, so we need to be respectful. We need to remember what we're dealing with. It is a wild predator. Their behavior is never going to be 100% predictable. Um, and they're not interested in harming us in general, but still our behavior and our presence could potentially create dangerous situations. So we need to be mindful of this, and as I said, remember what we're dealing with. We're visiting them in their natural environment, so as I be respectful and remember what they are. To keep interactions with them safe, uh, there's one major headline that actually sums it up very nicely, and of course I'm going to go through the details of how to follow that headline uh, now in the next actually two presentations. So, the main thing that we should avoid is to do anything in the water that makes us look like prey. As I said, we're dealing with a self-confident predator, so if we want to safely interact with them, we have to at least appear self-confident as well. Whatever it looks like from the inside, but externally, we have to give the picture of a self-confident being as well. How do we do that? So let's go through the different points. Um, first one is very, very simple actually. It is about staying calm. Yeah, this is crucial. Anybody that is nervous or that is afraid generally is not calm, also externally. So to keep this self-confident appearance, stay calm. Avoid quick and erratic movements when these sharks are around. So don't flop around with your arms. Don't frantically kick with your fins. Ideally, even keep your hands tucked in close to your body. Yeah, this is a good way to deal with them. But there's a downside to this one. If you freeze around a shark like this, if you're too calm, then again, they have the upper hand. Then they think you're an inanimate object and they will explore you and check you in whichever way they want. This inadvertently actually happened to a diver of mine, so I can give you an example of what this can look like. Uh, this video that I will show you was filmed at the Brothers, probably about three years ago now. Um, and the person that is on the video is diving with Oceanics the first time. He got like quite detailed briefing, again, including uh, the statement that he should stay calm. So when he meets the Oceanic the first time, he takes this to the extreme. And you will see uh, what the shark is doing in response to this person pretty much freezing. So as I said, taken at the brothers, more specifically small brother, morning dive, typical situation, reef is in the background, we're hanging just underneath the boat to look for the oceanics. So the person does not move, the shark almost drops against him. He doesn't even turn around to see where the shark is going. He regulates his buoyancy, but that has no relation to the shark. Second approach, the oceanic bumps into his elbow already, and again, he's not moving. And look now at the last approach, what the shark is doing. He pretty much rubs all the way through his face and almost takes his mask off. Now, the final thing for this shark now to do, if he really wants to know what this thing is, would have been a test bite. That was the only thing that was left for that shark to do, and luckily he didn't do it. Yeah, but this person just really completely froze and didn't do anything. Of course, we came back to the boat and I asked him what was going on there, and he was like, well, you told me to stay calm. Yeah, touche, I did, but of course I didn't think this was going to go to this extreme. So, let's go through it. Besides staying calm, and this was too extreme, what else should he have done in a situation like this? This get, gets us to actually a very important point too. It is really important to keep your eyes on these sharks. Yeah, the one or two sharks that are around you, look where they are so that you can react to their movement. How do you do that best? The best way is to slowly take a vertical position in the water column, obviously with your fins down, 
Because then you can follow the movement of the shark very easily without actually moving much yourself, simply by pivoting with your fins very, very slightly. Yeah, so that is a very good position. You can look up, you can look to the side, you can look down, you can look behind you without moving much yourself. If you do this from a horizontal position, which is your normal trim, then you really have to turn around and move a lot more to keep track of the movement of sharks all around you. So this is point number one. And then the next thing is that you keep looking around you. Even if you see a shark in front of you, don't get tunnel vision. Yeah? Make sure that you look around once in a while so that you cannot be surprised by a shark approaching you from behind. Because very simply, given the chance, they will try to sneak up on you. Again, very, very classic predator behavior. You approach anything unknown from the blind spot. If they don't see you, First of all, they cannot run away, that's one thing, or they will not run away, but also they will not do anything to you. If you approach an unknown object, you don't know what's going to do, is it going to fight back, is it going to hurt you, so you sneak up to it so that it doesn't even have the option. And that's very classically what sharks are doing, what oceanics are doing. So very often, even if you watch other divers, you will see oceanics coming up from right behind them. Yeah, so take away the element of surprise, make sure that you stay alert and you look around. You don't really actually have to look around, even just paying attention to other divers. See what, what they're looking at. If you're the only person looking that way, and everybody else is looking behind you, there's probably something there that is quite close. Yeah? So just stay alert, make sure you keep track of the shark or sharks that are moving around you. And then the next part of this is, if you do that, then you have the chance to notice changes in the shark behavior. Okay, so if sharks get excited or agitated, they will change their body language. If you keep your eyes on them, you can notice it. And I showed this video in the last presentation, but because it's so important, I just want to show it as a refresher. What are the signs of an oceanic or of a shark that gets excited? You can see it in their swimming style. So as I said, this is a repetition for those that watched the other one. Quick tail movements, the pectoral fins are bent down because the shark is turning a lot, and this shark also changes direction very, very quickly and very often. Finally, in the end of this short video, the shark actually moves all the way up to the bow of a moving liverboard. So what this indicates is this shark is excited about a chemical trail that he picked up that he now follows to the uh, highest concentration. So this is a shark excited about potentially finding food. Yeah? And this is what you need to recognize in the water with them so that you can stay away from them. Keep your distance or even leave the area or the water in a calm and orderly fashion. If you need to do that within oceanic close, it is important that you do this in a certain safe way. And that safe way is turn around so that you can keep your eyes on the shark, fin backwards towards wherever you need to go back towards your boat, back towards the reef, with slow, deliberate movement, and that means you can still watch that shark while slowly fitting backwards and away from it. Because the worst thing that you can do, and this was part of the problem and some of the incidents uh, that we had in 2018 at the Brothers, was people just turning around, fitting away from that shark with high speed without even checking or looking if that shark is following them or how close they are to them. Yeah, you just run away. This is classic prey behavior, running away from a predator. And again, predators are classically built to follow things that are running away from them. The hunting instinct kicks in, and you make yourself very vulnerable. And as I said, this is the opposite of being self-confident and actually uh, facing a confident predator. Yeah? So this is important. You can back away from them, but it needs to be done in a certain way. And then another point that you need to consider as well in your diving behavior around oceanics is your buoyancy. Control of your buoyancy is very, very important, okay? And that's both up and down action. The oceanics may be very shallow. They find a lot of their food on the surface, so this is a really interesting area for them. So for us, the surface is not safe. That is because of the oceanics. And of course, also, if we're out in the blue, where you generally find oceanics, um, there might be zodiac traffic, yeah? So for us, five meters should be the minimum depth when we're diving with oceanics. Ideally, actually, the deeper. The deeper you go, the less likely you are to be closely approached by them. Yeah, but the surface area on the surface or just underneath is dangerous for us for a variety of reasons. So five meters minimum is some of the depth you should stick to. But buoyancy control is also important when it comes to uh, the depth 
Any quick and uncontrolled changes in depth might trigger the interest of an oceanic. Because it's again almost like running away from them. You're level with an oceanic, you either pop up to the surface or you plummet down uncontrolled. It's, oh, hey, something is running away from me and they will follow. And of course, if you're dropping down to depth, this can get also quite tricky. The surface is mainly a problem because of potential traffic above you, and that can be uh, dangerous. Dropping down can have a few other issues. And again, I'll show an example. Very classic. Diver, brothers, shallow and oceanic approaches. She loses her buoyancy and she quickly plummets down. And the oceanic finds this really, really interesting. So have a look at this. Again, taken at the brothers. You see here the oceanic, this is the shock line, so it gives you a depth gauge actually. The shock line is about six, seven meters. So the diver notices there's a shark, and from that point on, look how quickly she shoots away from that shock line with flopping fins that this oceanic finds really interesting. Now there's also a rumor that oceanics like yellow fins, actually. These fins are sort of green. Uh, it's not the fins that he's interested in, it's the movement of the fins, because she keeps flopping around and most of the time has no idea how quickly she's dropping, or like here, how close the shark actually is to her. Yeah, so the guy is following, he's trying to get her to stop to pay attention to him, but she just plummets. She has absolutely no idea, because by the time that he actually comes to her and picks her up, she's in almost 30 meters. And he does exactly the right thing. He makes her to stop the movement of the fins, he obviously stops the plummeting, keeps his eye on the oceanic, which does one more turn, so the guy has his eye on him, tries to get the fin in position as a bit of a buffer, but the oceanic at this point loses interest already and just turns away, because the interesting bits are finished. This diver is not plummeting anymore, and there's no uncontrolled flopping around with fins or arms anymore. Yeah, so the starting point of this scene was the diver losing buoyancy and plummeting down, and the oceanic following, and then it spirals into this quick drop to almost 30 meters. This is a situation where divers will come back and actually tell other people that they were chased to 30 meters by an oceanic. Where I think in most cases, the starting point of this issue was the loss of buoyancy of that diver anyway. Yeah, but this is an important one, so keep hold of your buoyancy. So this actually concludes uh, part three. Uh, there's another two uh, more subjects coming up for um, dealing with uh, safe diving practices and guidelines. Uh, and they are to limit your time on the surface and how to deal with close approaches. And this will be in part four, which will be the next one. Thank you very much.